Hey y'all, welcome to Miss Clark's chemistry class. I've been teaching chemistry for over 20 years and I am here to help you make sense of the lesson that you had in class. This lesson is about naming ionic compounds, but more specifically, ionic compounds dealing with those main group metals. So if this is what you're looking for, go ahead and press the like button. Also, if you're looking for help about transition metals, polyatomic ions, go check all those tutorials out in the description. Go ahead and grab your notes, grab your periodic table, and something to write with, and let's get started. Okay, so let's focus on naming ionic compounds with main group metals. So remember, the main groups are those tall groups. They're the groups that always follow the trends of the periodic table. The main groups always tell us the valence electrons, and the main groups always tell us the oxidation numbers. So when we're talking about main group metals, we're talking about group one, group two, and aluminum. Group one is always a plus one when it forms an ion. Group two, always a plus two when it forms an ion. And then from group three, aluminum is really the only metal that we consider a main group metal. These are the metals that we're going to be talking about when we consider naming ionic compounds that come from main group metals. So before we get started, let's remember something about ionic compounds. Ionic is when we transfer electrons. And when we transfer electrons, that always occurs between metals and non-metals. When we're naming ionic compounds, we always list the metal first. And remember, we're talking about main group metals. That is group one and two and aluminum. Those are the groups we just looked at on the periodic table. We use a binary naming system when we're naming chemical compounds. Binary, that prefix bi means two. Nary means name. So this is a naming system that uses two names. The first name, the metal, we're always going to leave that as is. The last name, that's the non-metal, we're always going to change that ending to an I-D-E. So if we have fluorine, we would have fluoride. So let's look at some examples. We have SRF2. When we're talking about naming ionic compounds from the main group metals, really and truly all ionic compounds, you are always going to name the metal, change the non-metal to an IDE, and that's pretty much it. So SR, that's strontium. F, that's fluorine. So that would be changed to fluoride. So SRF2, that's just gonna be strontium fluoride. Let's look at the second example, Na2O. Na, that's the metal. Na is sodium, we're gonna leave that as is. O, that's oxygen. Oxygen needs to end in I-D-E. So we're gonna change that. So Na2O is sodium oxide. Na is sodium, O is oxygen. We change that ending to I-D-E, so that becomes sodium oxide. Let's look at two more examples. Mg3N2. Mg, that's our metal. Well, let's remember, let's leave our metal the way it is. Magnesium. N, that's nitrogen but we've gotta change that ending to IDE. So we get magnesium nitride. If you notice, we are not paying attention to those numbers at all. We're just looking at the metal, we're looking at the non-metal and changing the ending to IDE. This is the way that we name compounds that have main group metals. Let's try one last example, CAS. Ca is calcium, we're gonna leave that exactly the way it is. S is sulfur, but remember, we've gotta change that ending to IDE. So we have calcium sulfide. Now you should be a pro at naming ionic compounds. I have linked some practice problems in my answer key in the description down below. Go ahead and practice for a little bit, and if you're struggling, come back and rewatch this video. If this was helpful, Make sure and subscribe. Also, share this with your friends that might be struggling in chemistry. Until next time, bye y'all.